This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Hi, producer, whose name the audience will forget if we said it. Hey, Rock, you excited to be in your first movie? Hey, hey, it's Dwayne Johnson now. If I'm going to be starring in movies, I should be using my real name, shouldn't I? Well, there's been some changes. Changes? Yes, you're no longer the star of the movie. The studio thinks that Brendan Fraser is going to have longer lasting power than a guy called The Rock. Oh, so I'm a supporting role. Yeah, and if it goes well, they'll give you your own movie afterwards. Oh, well, that's Hollywood, isn't it? I've come this far, I could wait a little longer. Wonderful. We'll have the script for you soon. <sighs> yeah? Hey, another change. You've gone from being supporting role to just being in the opening and ending. Really? Yeah, they think Rachel Wise and this new child actor are going to be a lot bigger than you. All right, well, just keep me posted when you get the lines. Will do. <sighs> Hello? So you don't really have any lines. You just sort of frown after losing a battle. Can you do that? Are you doing it? Yes, I'm doing it! Wonderful. This is going to be your big breakout role. So you're being replaced with the CG puppet at the end? Why? You remember Marta from Arrested Development? No, it doesn't exist yet! Well, she's in the movie and they think she's gonna be a bigger star than you. Sweet Jesus. So if you can get those effects done by Friday, that'd be perfect. Wait, you want me to do the effects for the movie? Yeah, they figure if your lazy ass wasn't gonna star in it, you might as well make yourself useful. I've never done CG animation in my life! Come on, you have a 98 million dollar budget behind you. How bad could it and now, number two on the worst CG effects of all time, The Rock from The Mummy Returns. I did my best! Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember it? So you don't have to. It's funny, when the 1999 version of The Mummy came out, a lot of people were surprisingly saying they preferred this fun, expensive B-movie to the incredibly anticipated Star Wars The Phantom Menace. So I guess it's fitting that their follow-up should be the equivalent of Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Now let me clarify, something like Star Wars had a lot more to let down. It is goofy too, but it had a lot of spiritual, philosophical, and mythological elements. The Mummy films from day one knew they were mindless fluff, and most everybody was okay with that. But like Rise of Skywalker, it abandoned any sense of pacing and character and replaced it with constant action and exposition. So when you're supposed to feel for a character, it honestly comes across as more humorous. In fact, a lot of this movie is pretty dull when you're sitting through it because it gives you so little to care about. But when you actually look at the structure, how much it throws at you, and why characters do what they do, it's pretty hilarious. It's kind of like Krampus that way. Sitting through it is a little dull, but remembering it is surprisingly more fun. It is growing on me just for how bad it is, but what's the point in yapping about how ridiculous it is when I can just show you? Let's go back to 2001 when Joe Dirt ruled the Earth. This is The Mummy Returns. The film opens with the Scorpion King, played by Dwayne Johnson in his first movie, which may explain why he's still acting like he's in an SNL sketch. Masente! But give him room to grow. Leading an army to conquer the known world. The Egyptian fighting is fake, yo. All right, clearly they have this battle won or not. The Scorpion King and his army were defeated. That's not the impression you were giving literally a second ago. Even Rock has a look like, what, we couldn't even show that? How are they cutting corners on an amazing budget of a little more than the last one? One by one, they slowly perished under the scorching sun. Oh, waiter, check please. If Anubis would spare his life and let him conquer his enemies, he would give him his soul. You know, if every god granted that every time it was asked, a lot of people would have conquered the earth. The known world was then ruled by Steve, Jacob, Jacob's little sister Molly. Even Molly's cat offered his soul. I'm God. 
like I said, not a ton more money for these effects. Clearly they put the rest of the budget towards- Hey, no peeking! Anubis forced the Scorpion King to serve them. <laughs> We'd love to know what direction was given on that take. Alright, you're doing the hokey pokey as Tapia from Fiddler having a stroke being electrocuted by eels. Tell me this director wouldn't put it that way. Hi, nobody told me we stopped shooting so I just stayed on set for three years. Brendan Fraser returns as Rick O'Connell, and he's accompanied by... <laughs> ah yes, adding a kid in a sequel is always the sign of great possibilities. Okay, not every kid added in a series is bad, but unless you give them something unique to work with, it's usually not a good sign. And literally, the first few lines this kid says establishes no character, he just explains exposition. But I saw your tattoo on a wall by the entrance. There's a cartouche just like it. It's not dialogue they're saying, it's verbal dotted lines on a treasure map. Just listen to Evelyn, played again by Rachel Weiss. Weiss? Weiss? You'll disagree in the comments either way. Just listen to what one of her first lines are. Ever since I had that dream, this place is all I can think about. Ever since you had that dream, I haven't had Oh, sorry, you walked in ten minutes late. Let me explain what the dream is. <clears throat> Wait, no, you didn't. That's the first we're introduced to that! But there's not even time to explain this, as other people break in and try to stop them. Drink from the Nile. Oh, well, that doesn't sound too bad. Remember when finding a lost city was kind of exciting? Remember when little hints were introduced before you saw the big stuff? Remember when meeting people meant actually getting to know them? Now you just start off in the mysterious city. The big stuff is given to you right away. If you don't know what that character is like, we're not going to tell you. It's like the film is punishing you for missing scenes that aren't in the movie. <laughs> Even a flood gets no reaction. Indiana Jones has seen the craziest shit, but he still reacts when a tsunami's coming at him. Water! Water! These two are like, well, if there's not a face on it, we don't care. Mom, Dad, I can explain everything. <laughs> That's so what generic boy number 215 would say. Anyway, it's not like we need more explaining as we cut to other ruins where two new characters introduce themselves in a way only their unique identities could provide. Just kidding, it's more exposition. The Book of the Dead gives life. And the Book of the Living takes life away. Does Steven Summers watch driving teachers like, Wow, look how they instructed to do things. Streetcar named Desire has nothing on this depth! Get out of my way or I'm gonna shoot you in the face! It looks like the men who tried to kill Rick and Evelyn show up at the dig. We need that bracelet. Need it before it opens. <laughs> that means he's dumb. It's more than I know about anyone else. They dig up Emotep, but they need a bracelet that Rick and Evelyn discovered in order for them to continue their quest. The lost oasis of Amshir. I know what you're thinking, and the answer is no. I'm not Indiana Jones, no matter how hard nobody wishes it. Okay, at least we can see them work some of the charm they had in the last movie. Have you not been watching more exposition, man? The last known expedition to actually reach Amshir was sent by Ramesses IV. Shut the fuck up! 3,000 years ago. Hey, what's that kid supposed to be like again? Who cares? Things! 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 You and Alex are the only thing that matter to me. Best parents of the year or best of all time? Ah, great. The one character I love to know less about is in this. Oh, what am I worried about? There's so many plot threads in this, they won't even allow him time to be annoying. Yep, called it. Good evening. What are you doing here? Skipping an episode of Lost for this shit. I think not. It looks like Ardith joins the battle. Once again, doing an awful job stopping things from getting worse. He was there when Emotep was dug up! That would have been a good time to do something! And they fight them all off. Evelyn discovers, though, she suddenly has some new fighting moves. Whoa, whoa! When did you learn to do that? I have no idea. Sure didn't help me in the last film. Oh. Or now. Mom! Hang on, my only reason for existing is to be kidnapped? You got the wrong person! Bad guys are here, Evie's been kidnapped, let me guess. They once again removed the creature from his grave. I don't mean to point fingers, but isn't it your job to make sure that doesn't happen? He explains how these people are raising Emotep to take out the Scorpion King because whoever takes him out can rule the world. You have the sacred mark. That mark means you're a protector of man, a warrior for God, a magi. Can we cut it from this movie and miss nothing? Yes. But why is it in this? Because... Ooh, big movie, ooh. Will there be more pointless shit like this? All of this is pointless shit. <sighs> You know, a couple of years ago, this would have seemed really strange to me. Agreed. We did a good job killing the WoW in these films. Oh. Emo 
Imhotep is resurrected and is immediately drawn to the reincarnation of his love named Mila. Look, she even brought British food. I'll put you in your grave again. Shut up. Burn her. Yeah, we put that one together. God, we almost went a whole minute without any action. Sorry about that, audience. Hopefully somebody explains some shit to you while we weren't fighting. <laughs> Emotep resurrects more mummies in the most goofy way imaginable. I think Marvin the Martian adding water had more dignity. And they, of course, chase them down. Oh, I hate mummies. I'm hoping to turn that into a Garfield shirt in the future. Copyright Rick O'Connell. <laughs> he tries using Three Stooges moves on them because nothing matters, and they eventually fight them off. All right. This was my first bus ride. Da! Ah, personality! Rick and Evelyn once again completely ignore their son. I mean, the shot is just awkward. Allowing him to be kidnapped. Alex. I think. Pretty sure it begins with an A. Look at that open road. I've been driving on this open road long before anyone paid me to drive on this open road. You know what I see on this open road? I see stamps.com. Let's face it, taking trips to the post office is probably not how you want to spend your time. You want to spend it on the open road. That's why I recommend mailing and shipping online at stamps.com. Stamps.com allows you to mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. Send letters, ship packages, and pay a lot less with discounted rates from UPS, S, UPS, and more. Stamps.com has saved businesses thousands of hours and tons of money. With Stamps.com, you get the services of the post office and UPS all in one place. Plus big discounts on mailing and shipping rates. Where am I even driving? I don't know. But I know I like Stamps.com. Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. Stamps.com is a must-have for any business, whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller shipping out orders, or even a giant warehouse sending thousands of packages a day. Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. What accent am I doing? Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or a drop-off. It's that simple. I sound like that actor. Fatty Arbuckle. With Stamps.com, you get discounts up to 40% off post office rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Not to mention, Stamps.com is a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. It's no wonder nearly one million small businesses already use Stamps.com. I, I kind of whispered that last one. I, I could have whispered it more. Maybe if I whisper this next sentence, that'll help. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. No, now I just did the reversal. Forgive me, stamps. There's no risk. And with my promo code, Nostalgia, you get special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the home page, and type in Nostalgia. That's stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the home page and type in nostalgia. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. No, really, where am I? Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. So Mila explains to Emotep about how he was brought back to destroy the Scorpion King, and that in order to defeat him, he'll need a special scepter. So we're at the 50 minute mark, and just to give you an idea, in the first film, at the 50 minute mark, we were given the backstory, introduced to our characters, told about a lost city of riches, and they travel to it. 
here we're given the backstory, introduced Ish to our characters, are told about a lost city, told about a past life, told about a marked hand, fight off scavengers, fight off a cult, discover a map, watch Evelyn get kidnapped, resurrect Emotep, resurrect his guards, fight off the guards, rescue Evelyn, resulting in the son being kidnapped, and we're not even halfway through the movie. Yes, less happened in the first one, but they allowed the characters to react to what was happening. Despite being the bare-bone minimum in terms of development, they still met that bare-bone minimum. This is just that old Fireball Island game. It looks cool, but it's just rules being explained and more pieces being moved around to get to a goal. Granted, a ton of great cinema has come from board games, but unless you're Clue, that's not something you want to mimic. Oh, you want even more pointless bullshit? How about this? The bracelet with the map is stuck to the boy, and unless he gets to the location in a few days, it'll kill him. Again, you could totally cut this and not miss a damn thing, but for some reason, it's in the film. My dad is going to kick your ass. That line got a big laugh in the theater. I hated my audience. I'm pretty sure they hated me. Emotep glides in on puppet strings to suck the life out of the scavengers. I will admit, this part's pretty badass. And we cut to Rick and Evelyn trying to get a ride from an old friend. Honey, you're not a subtle man. We don't have time for subtle. Somers was thinking of legally changing that to his new name. He eventually agrees, and they travel via balloon, which they say is a terrible idea because it's not made for battle. The pilot disagrees, though, and eventually discovers it's not made for battle. I want him back, Rick. I want him in my arms. I know. I'm remembering all the times we pretended he didn't exist as well. Oh, and for whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure why, Rachel Weiss is awful in the rest of this. I don't know if the fatigue of just saying shit they have to do finally got to her, but from this point on, she completely gives up. I want him back, Rick. Alex left us his tie. No, no, they're memories from my previous life. Make me proud. It's the Temple Island of Philae. They've gone to Philae. Exactly. I was its protector. I haven't worked for a year to defeat the Military Creation Act, to not be here when its fate is decided. I guess to her credit, they wrote her better than what do kids say in kids things? Have the kids say that. No. 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 I heard a child say those words and everything ever written. He has an identity now. No. You can't go and someone's watching. I don't trust you. You look. Get to know the ghost of playing with fire was haunting screenplays before it even existed. The kid escapes just to be recaptured exactly 40 seconds later. Do higher budgets mean less editors? And I guess we're finally shown what's going on with Evelyn's dreams. Okay, so this is where we get that Lucas Rowling stuff where a series tries to act like an out of nowhere plot thread that makes no sense was always planned from the beginning. We see Evelyn, who looks as Egyptian as Jeffrey Rush, is actually the reincarnation of the Pharaoh's daughter, the sister of Emotep's lover. I know you're thinking we'll see some interesting development between them, but have you watched a frame of this? It's just more fighting. Take that, patriarchy. But here's what I love about this. In the first film, Emotep sees Evelyn as his long-lost love, despite looking nothing like her. Now, you could say he hadn't seen a woman in years, so he got confused, or even he just pegged the first hot woman he saw and said, close enough, I'm gonna reincarnate her anyway. But now with this film, after he reincarnates his love to her physical form, giving herself the Heimlich, how do you tell her, oh, by the way, I totally had the hots for your sister when you were dead. Yeah, I looked her up and down. I was totally obsessed. I was even going to bring you back in her. How would you like that? Being reincarnated in the person responsible for your death. That would have been fun looking in the mirror every day. Speaking of which, what was Mila's plan? Yes, I'll help Emotep take over the world and have my soul completely erased from my body. I'm sorry, what's in this for me again? The only thing I believe in this movie is that you're sisters because you're both dumb as rocks. <laughs> Jesus, Evelyn, can't you even stand without me having to save you? As the journey continues, the boy, I guess, leaves clues to let them know where they're going next. That I don't think a professional butter sculptor could carve better. Emotep catches on to the clues being left behind, and let's see, what I do, a sand face in the last one? Okay, let's water it down. <laughs> getting worse in these movies! 
This looks like an extreme 90s ad for mouthwash. Tired of plaque buildup in those hard to reach places? Listerine can wash it all away! Our heroes run out of gas and the wave completely crushes them. Well, it'll be interesting to see how they get out of this. We're gonna go get my son, then we're gonna want to get out of here fast and so make this work, Izzy. Yeah, you're right. It would have been boring everything else you've shown in this is. Moving on. Evelyn is taught how to use a gun. And the crew come across mummy gremlins. Emotep seems to be in control of them, yet they still wipe out all his men. You figure that one out. But I will admit, these things can be a little funny. I like how they run on top of drowning people. I like how a man screaming frightens them, even though it doesn't make any sense. They've seen a ton of people scream. And this moment with the stick of dynamite is hands down the funniest in the movie. <laughs> I don't even care if they throw in this strange love homage that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm still riding the high of this scene. Play one more time. That's the real treasure of the movie. I missed you so much. Shut the hell up, more exposition! You told me the bracelet will kill me if I don't get inside the pyramid before the sun hits it. Oh my god. <laughs> Even she's like, Does this movie need Ritalin? What five-year-old on espresso ice cream wrote this? Dad! The bracelet! What's it slowing you down? Why is every child and woman in this completely useless? They make it to the temple in time. Again, have no idea why that was written in. But the bad guys catch up and kill Evelyn. Or gauging her reaction, just called her fat. She's going to be all right. Just get it, take him, take Don't worry, we'll recast her. I'm pretty sure she lives in this one. We'll still recast her. So I'm not gonna lie, the mix of his overacting, her underacting, and the melodramatic music despite all the advertising clearly showing she has more scenes, makes this dramatic moment unintentionally hilarious. Oh my... <sighs> Take care of Alex. Who's Alex? Oh, right, that thing we never look after. <laughs> Blinking a lot means death, right? Baby. Come back. Come back. Come back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if this was like someone's Mufasa death or something like that. I apologize. Just, this is really funny to me. I don't even get it. She goes back and forth saying, Oh, I have special badass powers from ancient royalty, yet half the time she's taken out like a house of cards made of tracing paper. It doesn't add up. Critic, you simply don't understand reincarnation. Oh, and you do, Tamara? Yes, I... Excuse me. I have to go take care of something. <laughs> Sorry about that. Someone tried to break in. But what's with the... Oh, I'm the reincarnation of Lagertha. The Viking warrior? Yeah, so I know about combat training and sword fights. I mean, History Channel's hit me up a few times. Wait, what's up with your hands? Oh, he woke back up and overpowered me. What about the combat training and the... Well, that's not my arc, Critic. My next door neighbor is on an emotional journey and needs to prove himself by saving me. Unhand her, you swine. <laughs> oh. oh, well, when do you prove yourself? Preferably when it's hot. Oh, a lady assassin, clearly with an exotic backstory. That should do. Need a help? Or... No, critic, when it's hot, we're suddenly invincible. Women's stunt work is more complex than I thought. Emotep enters the temple and... Okay, this is meant to be awful, right? Not just corny or over the top. I mean, this is Battlefield Pyramid, right? Pianatara. It looks like his powers are taken away while Rick begins comforting his son, who just lost his mother. By abandoning him again, the real treasure is the people we leave behind along the way. Did they say no to any effects in this? No, apparently not, as an army of jackals rise and the army of, eh, we kinda wanna stop the apocalypse, are there to face them. A day may come when we fight an enemy that actually looks like they're in front of us, but it is not this day. This day we're in a Mummy's Alive cartoon! <laughs> Meanwhile, Rick faces off with Emotep, who 
kicked him back on his feet. That was pretty stupid. But again, to the film's credit, it is kind of cool seeing these two duke it out. I mean, in the last one, it was all about Rick fighting the powers of the mummy. Here, it's one-on-one -on -one combat, and it is a little badass. While that's going on, Evelyn is brought back to life by believing in fairies like it even matters. And she, of course, faces off against Mila. But Mom! No buts, Alex. Come on, Alex. I'll be just fine. Lady, you have done everything possible to prove you will never be fine. I trust Princess Peach with a sign reading dragons do it for me over you. Eventually, the Scorpion King is revealed, and we see it. An effect which will live in infamy. I think everyone has talked about how terrible these effects are, and what else can I add but good God, they still look awful. Just to give you an idea how bad this was, Lord of the Rings was released the same year. So if you're asking me were these good effects at the time, no. They are as embarrassing then as they are now. It just doesn't make sense why they wouldn't put the real rock in there. Like, you could CG the scorpion half, it looked like shit, but we're used to that in this movie. We want to see the rock in his first film. And instead, we get the video game version of himself. The only difference? He actually does his own voice in the video game! You are my lover. That sounded like Patty and Selma if they talked in unison. You are my lover. Like a lot of this movie, it's so bad, it's hugely funny. Can you smell what the FX artists are shitting? Rick realizes something something chosen one again. You don't miss a thing if I don't tell you. And he uses the golden scepter to finally kill him. Leading to another not meant to be funny, but so goddamn funny reaction. No! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I know there's people that like legit like this film. If you do it, that's fine. But how can you not cry laugh at some of these moments? It's like a super flamboyant dancer introducing a song number. The Scorpion King, you look like ass, but I do ya! Go to hell and take your friends with you! I do like that the finishing one-liner has more of a purpose than just being a finishing one-liner, as the Scorpion King has to do whatever he's told after he's defeated. So he drags all his armies back to hell. How many CG faces can you put on things? Hey, Somers, what's your idea for Mummy 5? Uh, a lamp with a face! Ooh! No! Get out of here! Just get out of here! Well, you have saved her more times than the Fuller House cast has teeth. I think she owes you at least one. Devil Wing! No! <laughs> I see now, the true monster was lack of commitment. Speaking of which, most of us won't be back for the third one! we wrap on even more amazing effects. Whoa! I never thought I'd say this, but I missed the dignity of Indiana Jones looking at a UFO. And they make it out okay. I thought I almost lost you there. Would you like to know what heaven looks like? You weren't in it. The family is reunited, which once again means keeping the sun away as far as friggin' possible. And they all live half a keyed ever after. And that was The Mummy Returns. I know it has its fans, and if I'm in the right mood, I kinda can be? I mean, look, it's awful. No, put the camera back on me. It's awful. But sometimes it's so bad, it can be enjoyable. If it had more character, or Christ, any character, I would probably get more into it, despite it being so idiotic. But because it is nothing but action and exposition every single second, it does get tiring. I think that shows with the reception. I mean, it did technically make more money than the first one, but not a ton more. People did seem to like it, but not as much as the first. And some of these scenes are talked about for how bad they are, even to this day. Had I seen this as a kid, maybe I would enjoy it more. I mean, it does have a lot more monsters and energy, which a lot of kids do like. But without even the bare minimum of character, it's just a stunt show, where half the stunts are bad CGI. But what do you think? Am I being too much of a sourpuss and not having fun with a mindless movie? Or is there too little mind for even a mindless movie to give leeway? Let me know in the comments if you think this film is a corny classic or the first render of a bad video game. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Come back. Come back. 
Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. No, LASIK hasn't failed me. Uh, th this is apparently to help your eyes from like blue light that comes from the screen because my eyes have been hurting a little bit from uh, working so much. So uh, LASIK hasn't failed me and that's where these dents are from. That's why I brought it up and left them on there because they'll be like, what, is he wearing glasses again? That's the reason and it has nothing to do with today's charity. So forget I said it, I guess. Uh, no, this uh, charity once again uh, came from a, a recommendation from uh, one of the fans. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, the recommendations. It's, it's very, very kind. We got a ton of them, so just thank you so much. And uh, don't slow down, okay? Keep recommending them, because uh, like I said, there, there's so many good ones out there. And the one this week is uh, Brain Chemistry Labs. Uh, they seek to discover new treatments for brain diseases by studying proven patterns of wellness and disease. Uh, their focus is to discover new treatments for serious illnesses. This focus has led to the discovery of two promising new drugs for ALS, Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, and other diseases. Uh, they even have a third drug in development as well. So each step along the way has brought them closer to a cure. They also have a four-star rating on Charity Navigator. This is really a wonderful charity to check out, and they're doing amazing work. So please check them out, see the cool stuff that they do. And once again, if uh, you have a charity that you think is really wonderful and could use more attention, uh, feel free to uh, let us know, because as you well know, there's so many good people out there and so many good organizations, and they deserve as much attention as possible. So thank you so much.